Let's paint an easy beach scene here in Monet Cafe using pan pastels once again. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create soft beginnings using this innovative and beautiful medium. I'll teach you some layering techniques and how you can use regular pastels with pan pastels. Also, I'll teach you some tips on how to create depth and dimension, and of course, my favorite exaggerating color. You'll also glean a few tips on painting water and oh, so much more. Won't you join me here in Monet Cafe and let's get started. This is the shorter condensed version from my Patreon tutorial, but you're still gonna learn lots here. I'm using a beautiful reference image from pmp-art.com. I'll have a link in the description of this video. I am once again using pan pastels. They're like these little compacts of color. I like to keep my palette attached to my board with a clip using one of their plastic palette trays. Here again is the reference image. I cropped it to a square format, but I just loved that feeling of rain in the distance. The very unique thing about the pan pastel medium is that you can use pastels like paint using these applicators like brushes, simply just dipping them into the compacts of color and applying them. Now these look really dirty, I often just wipe them off with a paper towel, but the great thing is these tips are very affordable. So I started a little simple sketch. I used a Prismacolor New Pastel just to get in the horizon line and the basic gesture of the water lapping onto the sand. I first begin with the applicator that has a squared off edge, kind of like a little chiseled edge, and I'm using it in a way to directionally make marks that accentuate the feeling of that beach sand. You'll also notice that I'm combining colors. You can see me grabbing a few colors on my palette here. That's another benefit of pan pastels. You can mix colors right on your surface. Now let me mention my surface quickly. This is another great thing. Pan pastels apply quite nicely to unsanded pastel surfaces. Uh, if you have painted in pastels for long, you know that the sanded surfaces, while they're great, they get more layers, they're kind of expensive. So it's nice to know that we can use unsanded surfaces to work with using pan pastels. This surface is Ingress pastel paper. I'll have a link for it in the description of this video. My goal with this initial application using pan pastels is to block in the majority of my colors and values. This is also called an underpainting. I'm getting in my basic big shapes and values before getting more specific. I've now switched to the triangular applicator and I'm using it to get a little bit more precise mark making for that darker element. I think it's like a rock in the distance there. Now let's get some color and value in the sky. I love the drama of the sky and I also liked using this oval applicator. I'm getting in bigger areas that I want to be wispy and gestural. Notice how I move my hand and turn my applicator to get kind of quick and gestural marks for the sky. I'm basically using value and color the same way that I would with regular stick pastels, but I really do think the medium of pan pastels is excellent for getting a softness as in clouds and sky scenes. Now I've switched to my applicator that has a little bit more of a rounded into it, and it was a little bit softer for some of the edges I was making rather than the triangular or the squared off applicator edge. I'm not sure what happened to my camera angle here, but I think you can still see what I'm doing. There is quite a bit of darker uh, element to the sky where the rain is. Now I'm from Florida and I have seen these scenes so often. The clouds get so heavy full of rain and very dark. And I also loved in the distance how you could see the rain falling like in little rain bands. You'll see me develop that soon. And with pan pastels, I find that the values remain uh, not as dark as you can apply with stick pastels. So I'm going to actually apply stick pastels, re regular pastels like you're used to seeing, uh, on top of this underpainting when I have the majority of the shapes and values and colors in. Now, just like with regular pastels, you can control your value, whether it's lighter or darker, with these applicators simply by your pressure. Like I said, just like regular pastels. When painting the horizon line of a seascape like this, 
often there is a darker edge. You can see it in the photo, a darker line. Now, this is even if you're looking right out to the sea where all you see is the horizon line. There's typically just a darker edge. I have a video on YouTube here that's called 12 Easy Tips for Painting Water, something like that. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video if you're curious about some fun techniques and easy techniques for painting water. The version you're seeing of this lesson is substantially sped up with limited content. If you would like the full content, would you consider becoming a patron of mine? You not only support this channel, you get behind the scenes content, extra instruction, and so much more. One of my favorite things is I get to see your work. It really is a beautiful family, all for $5 a month, and you can cancel at any time. All right, now it's time for regular stick form of pastels that I will be applying on top of this pan pastel underpainting. Because I am using an unsanded surface, when I say unsanded, I mean it's just kind of feels like regular paper and not a sanded pastel surface, I am limited in how many layers I can get. Layers are just literally what it sounds like, layering one color on top of another, very similar to oil or acrylic painting. Uh, because pastels are an opaque medium, we can layer lighter colors over darker colors and vice versa. And it's in this layering technique that allows you the ability to create a painting where colors are really interacting with each other, gently showing through other layers and causing beautiful color interactions, much like in real life. I like to give an analogy of um, a paint by number. Who's ever done a paint by number? With that type of painting, you're literally just filling in color in little spaces and not laying color on top of each other. So this type of painting with pastels is really what gives that painterly and beautiful final appearance. Now I'm adding here a little bit of that light. I live in Florida, so I have seen these kind of storms all my life where you get those heavy rain clouds and rain falling literally in the distance like this. And I was really drawn to this photo because I love the drama and mystery of storms rolling in. As you can see, I added some of the lighter elements of the sky showing through, blended with my finger a bit. And now I'm using a darker pastel to give that feeling of darker value in the distance for that form that I think is a rock and it won't stay this dark. I'll lighten it up. Now sand when it gets wet is darker and so that's why I gave that darker a little bit of lavender in there for the wet sand and uh, now I'm getting a little bit of a darker edge um, on some of that water that has lapped up to the shore. As you can see, I have exaggerated the color a bit, which I often do. I just love color and it's really not all that hard to do. I simply examine the reference image and I see little subtleties of color. For example, I could see some purple and magenta in those clouds. So what I do is I just saturate that color a little bit more and um, create a painting that has just a little bit more life and vibrancy. And I'm adding some warmth to the sand, as you can see, and a little more lavender to get some of those darker areas in the sand. Just doing a little blending with my finger and softening things. Now I'm reinforcing that dark edge I was telling you about um, that you often see on the distant horizon line of a seascape like this. And I needed to give a little bit more depth to the water. As you can see in the reference image, the values are darker in the distant water than I had them uh, in my painting. So I took the liberty to give a little more turquoise and teal. Again, I could see little hints of turquoise in the water, little hints of green. Now I'm back to using my applicator brush just to soften things. And it actually did neutralize the color a little bit more. When you blend colors together like this, you're going to neutralize them and soften them. So now it's adding these little highlights of waves and bubbling water lapping onto the shore. And the painting is really starting to develop some depth and dimension at this point. And I did this painting really as a study. I would love to do it again as a more serious piece. I just, again, love these storm scenes and it already had such a nice composition. As you can see, I decided to add some green to the scene just to punch up color a little bit, a little more lavender. I seem to find a way to add a little bit of purple in almost every painting. And I like to recommend if you're just starting out painting, um, if you've never tried pastels before or any other medium before, this uh, suggestion 
suggestion works across many mediums, is to work small like this. It takes away the feeling of a piece having to be dramatic and spectacular. You're just creating a study. Also, you don't feel so bad about, you know, if you make a few mistakes, it wasn't an expensive large piece of paper. And I consider any painting a success if you learned something new. I often like to share that that's how this channel got started, Monet Cafe, is because I did not know what I was doing. I was trying so hard to learn and I almost quit painting with soft pastels. I couldn't find the right information out there. So that's why I love to share with you guys tips, techniques, and just encouragement that if you've ever wanted to be an artist, guess what? You can. So I'm glad you've joined me here in Monet Cafe studio for this painting of a simple beach scene and even if you're not a patron of mine you can still share it on Instagram and tag me at Susan Jenkins artist I love to see when you recreate for my tutorials but again if you would like the fuller version of this and to unlock hundreds of pastel painting tutorials consider becoming a patron of mine again it's just a beautiful happy place and I love my patreon family and here's a quick little footage of the final painting. Just a simple little, I believe it was a six by six painting that was a study on some very affordable pastel paper. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help for YouTube to share the video more. Also, leave me a comment and by all means, subscribe if you haven't already. All right, everyone, as always, God bless and happy painting.